Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. I am Will Crosby, your host of this year's show, Local Chat. Joining me this week, as always, the two-second delayed Ian Gibson. Hello, hello, hello. It's me. I'm here. Hello. Hi. Fuck audio tech. And speaking of fucking audio tech, it's Jake Terrio. Fucking <laughs> good at it. <laughs> I was trying to think of a Lego pun while I was sitting here, and I couldn't come up with anything. Um, aren't you look glad to be you? Mm -hmm. Folks, um, God. We're here to talk about things in the internet and video games and a little bit of news. Um, this is Logo Chat, episode 123, I believe, which is kind of crazy to think about. Um... Episode 123 of this, episode 4 of Chasing Kojima. We're on a tear with these podcasts, folks. <laughs> They're just going crazy. Um, Ian Gibson, uh, is this Hi. chit chat section Hello. still happening that is written here? Yeah, it is. Um, okay. It's crazy. Uh, do you want to intro it real quick? Well, I was just going to say we, um, we actually got um, sent in the mail to us is an answering machine. And I just have a bunch of tapes. And by answering machine, I mean a, a phone with a working phone because it's not well, an answering no, machine. <laughs> the way it works is that it's an answering machine, but people call in and they leave their number and then we're supposed to call them back live. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So none of That's that part matters with the stream part. So we're going to call yeah. it back live. It's actually is a, it's a callback number. So I did that cool thing that they used to do in the 80s and 90s that I've heard on sitcoms, which means they're going to call us back right now. So let's let's hope that. Uh, no, I'm sorry. We have to dial them in. Oh, That's oh how we're dialing them in. Th remember, we're going to call they, them back now. That's yeah, because they left. They left a message on they the voice left. machine, but the message was just the number that we have to call them. So, hey, I got a message for you. Call me back at one, two, three, four, oh. five, seven, fake street. Who's that? Wait, let me just, that's, hey, that's, let me that's just, let me just like a number. Let me dial them in. Let me dial them in real quick. OK, yeah. yeah. Me. Who is this? This is Will and Jake from Local Chat. Hey, young man, Local Chat boys, this is uh, Pepperoni Tony. How's it going? Thanks for calling me back. <laughs> Pepperoni Tony, could you possibly move your mouth a little further away from the microphone? You want to call it to the microphone? Is that what you want? Pepper this, this Pepperoni Tony. Is this a little bit better? Is it yeah, okay? Little... Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, I think doing. so. This, this is... I tell you, in the 1960s, everybody was using the telephone all night. I used to call my honeys up and down the street, talking this like this. You know, when your lips touch the telephone, that's when the night's looking good. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, how's it going, boys? What'd you call me for? Um, well, you called us, actually. Oh, that's right. I got a question. I got a question for you. Listen. Ah, on about this little Zelda boy. I keep seeing images of it. It's a succulent little boy showing off his abs. Oh, it's, it's, is Nintendo gonna make a Zelda movie? But that little boy gonna sell so many tickets. Uh, okay. Thank you for your question. We'll, we'll tune into this week's episode to hear the answer, Tony. Okay. Alright, call me back with the answer, okay? Alright, I'll talk to you later. Uh, calling Tony back. <gasps> that was very weird. <gasps> Where did you very go? Weird. Did you have to pee? Oh, because I peed out my eyes. No, it's. <sighs> we were talking about it before the stream. My audio is all fucked up, so I have to take my microphone and put it next to the phone. Right. Like I dial the guy in, and then and then he answers <sighs> it. It's, it's very messed up. We'll try and get it fixed uh, at some point. But oh, please no. Batman's here. Actually, yeah. <laughs> so we can figure this out. Um. <laughs> Oh boy, uh, Tony there, raging bony Tony. So his name was Pepperoni Tony. It's Pepperoni his... Tony. He was talking very loudly. I could hear it bleeding past. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was. Oh. <clears throat> um. Anyways, he asked about the um, 
Zelda movie. Why he, that boy isn't has a movie made yet? Oh my god! Um, yeah, I mean they did a Super Mario Brothers movie. Yeah, there was I, a Zelda. What was the rumor? No, it was confirmed Zelda Netflix project, and then the rumor was it got killed because of some so, very petty reason. My first question is: Is Tony referring to? the new Super Mario Brothers movie, or is he referring to the older one? Because he sounded like he was a hundred years old. So I assume he's Nintendo talking about movies. the 90s Nintendo Super uh, Mario they're both, they're, both, <laughs> they're both Nintendo movies, you know. They count. That's they true. both count. They both count. Um, I think, I, I don't know, I feel like I feel like the problem with this, well, actually I can't say this. I was going to say the problem with the Zelda movie is Link isn't really a main character in the sense of like you are always playing him, but that's the same exact thing with Mario, so I can't even make that argument. Um, yeah, but uh, let me put it this way: they keep making bad female empowered Ghostbusters movies. Why can't they make a bad female empowered Zelda movie? Like, so they keep making. They just made the one. <laughs> yeah. No, they said. made two. No, the Paul. They the only Paul Feig. Ghost, there's just one Ghostbusters movie. No, they made two. <laughs> no, they didn't. The latest one, the latest one was female forward as well. I don't know if it was bad or not, but that was that was female. The Jason forward. Reitman one. Yeah. No, it was kids. It was yeah. It was like the Goonies. Yeah, there was a female. Yeah, in but it. I believe I believe the star was was female. Again, I'm not saying that's that's good or bad. Well, no, but my I, argument I would, being, I would argue that I'm pushing very, back. I'm, no, I'm pushing no. back. On, <laughs> I'm pushing back on you saying they can't make a movie because Link doesn't do anything. And I'm like, the movie's not about Link. The movie's about right, Zelda. Right, 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 right. I was just going to say, the, the female-led Ghostbusters movie is very different. Is it's Calling that female-led is right because they gender-swapped everyone into all women versus, like, yeah. Ocean's 8 versus this the newer Ghostbusters movie. God, I forgot just a Ghostbusters about that. movie that has a leader lead cast as a what anyway. <laughs> That's um, fair. I, actually I never like watched that it. all women one. I watched it. Yeah, you're once. fucked in the head. <laughs> I just thought it's like it's like it's, it's like whenever they show it's like whenever they show um a generic non non gendered product, but they have the generic product and then they have like the pink women's product next to it and it's three dollars more. And it's like, you fucking idiots, you did not have to gender this in any way whatsoever. But you did in search of an audience and it didn't work. <laughs> yeah, I I was I had that trouble. I forget who convinced and not convinced me, but I had that trouble when Lego announced the like girls doll not like but like the different Lego <laughs> girls figures. And I had that reaction Lego first friends. and then Lego friends, thank you. And then I immediately after that, I was like, oh, wait, they're reaching out to girls who wouldn't already normally play with Legos. Like, yeah, that's obviously fair. it's successful. So I, I didn't have a problem yeah. with it. But in my head, I was like, why are you doing that? And then I was like, oh, of course you would do that. Anyways, I'm sorry. We're we're saying a lot of things <sighs> that Pepperoni Tony would probably agree with for all the wrong reasons. But true. My my rebuttal to the argument that you were not making mm -hmm. is that the movie shouldn't be about Link. It should be about Zelda. Yeah, I, I agree because Link is a way less established character than Mario. So yeah, uh, make and I'm way less in that fact than uh, Zelda. So for sure, I would make it about Zelda. I think that's a good. Isn't there? Good well, sorry, I wouldn't say it that way, but isn't there? Maybe it's Altered Carbon season two that I'm thinking of, where like there is like a very empowered, true protagonist female. But the series is about her like a weaker male counterpart trying to find her after the fact. You know what I mean? But it's not a save the princess. It's like this person was so much better than me and they are gone and I need to like figure out what happened to them. And there's flashbacks and stuff. And I think that would be OK, because then you would still have Link as quote unquote the main protagonist. But Zelda would be a very heavy individual unique character within it as opposed to just the save the princess trope. Yeah. Yeah, I can see any one of those. I, it's funny. I, uh, yeah, I really. It's we the same write way this I movie. could. It's the same way I couldn't think of a Mario movie when they announced it. I can't think of like a, a Zelda movie, even though those Zelda games have way more structure to them. But it's like yeah, conveying it's, the it's, puzzles. It's hero's you know? journey. You got the Ritos, the Goron, the the Zora. Like you, you got yeah, all the, the interesting. Yeah. Th those are your three main areas that you go to. If you want to be super generic, drop a major action sequence in each of them. Boom! There you go. There's your fucking oh, Zelda right. movie. Yeah, yeah, I can see that happening. 
Tony, so if you like that, Tony, then um, then uh, I'm glad you called in because that was a great bit. And I hurt still. I hurt very much. I, uh, you know, I should probably apologize. I didn't mean to say that movies with women in them are terrible. Just that the Ghostbusters female empowered one was a terrible idea. <laughs> I didn't think you said that, but you did just say it. So <laughs> I flip it. <laughs> It's one of those um, things where I'm like, look, I'm trying to make an argument here, but I'm going to make it in the worst way possible. I, 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 I think I don't know if this is what you meant, but I think when they try to <laughs> women, no, but when they try to. Uh, instead of from a, a like born this way point, they shove things into a movie. It doesn't always work yes. as well. As, yes. Uh, when they as try and like remake the exact same thing. Yeah. But gender swapped. Yes, I don't like that. that. that That's the same thing as a that. same thing as a pointless yeah. remake. It's it doesn't need to be that way. Yeah, and not that they're always bad. There could be an amazing one of those, but majority of them are. Jake also. I'd like agrees. to applaud Jake for just staying a completely <laughs> no, out of this just... troublesome conversation. <laughs> I mean, it's magical. Well, let's get back I need to learn that skill. Well, half of that's because my dog's freaking out. <laughs> Was it pepperoni, to Tony? To date yeah. him, it was. He heard the word pepperoni and then went nuts. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> for pepperoni, or is that a euphemism for something? You know, we'll uh, save that for later. I made it worse, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> we got to move on. Um, There's all sorts the of bad episode. thoughts going through my head. I can't keep yeah. them at bay anymore. We got to go. Bottom line, we women. Um, so moving on here, uh, that was a chit chat section, wonderful little chit chat section here. We're going to do a quick check in with tears of the kingdom. And I say quick, it is nine 15. We have until nine 25 to talk about tears of the kingdom. That is Should 10 we, minutes. If I may, I'd like to preface this a little bit. Last week was the first local chat since tears of the kingdom came out. So we, we spent a lot of time talking about tears of the kingdom, spoiler free. We have made a pact offline that we're going to keep Tears of the Kingdom discussion completely spoiler free going forward until at some point, six to eight weeks after release, we're going to sit down. We're going to dedicate an entire episode of local chat to spoiler heavy Tears of the Kingdom now that we have everybody finished it, etc. So if, if you want more Tears of the Kingdom chat, hold on to your butts, wait a little bit longer, finish the game so you can enjoy that spoiler heavy with us in a couple weeks. Yeah, that works. Um, oh, so we can just go. I, I'm gonna, I don't even want to talk about it then if we're just saving up. Well, I mean, we can talk about how we are so far right now. Like I can I can start out. I can keep it generic, it. which is that keep it generic. I feel like I have reached the podcast stage of this game. You guys, do you guys know what I mean? I did that today, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm really like, funny. I'm like 40, 40, 50 hours in. And basically I've reached a point where I'm like, I no longer have to dedicate 100% of my oral capacity to this game. I can now play a podcast while I'm playing this game. Um, and it lasted a while. That's not, that's not uh, an insult to the game in any way. It's basically just me saying, Hey, um, I'm getting just bored enough with this game that let me listen to a podcast in the background while I'm playing it. Um, and I've already heard all the audio cues, all the music and everything and all that's great. Um, and it's making the game more enjoyable. I do feel like I'm starting to get a little bit burned out. And that's not that's not a judgment on the game. That's me playing 40, 50 hours of a game over two weeks is rare. And so I'm getting a little burned out. How, how about you, Will? Are you getting a little a little long in the tooth over there? Yeah, a little bit. I've been trying not to. I've been trying to only play it. Um... Basically, I'm letting Karen have the TV back. So I've been trying to only play it uh, for like quick stuff. Uh, hi or neat. I see you in the chat. I am glad you saw some mantle. Um, so I've been only playing in like quick bursts um, and then I'll, I'll play it like at work. If I need to record stuff, I'll play a little bit extra while I'm recording. Um, and then. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'm at the point literally today. I was like, oh, let me put a podcast on um, yeah. story yeah. beats. I will. I will pause a podcast yes. obviously it's just when i'm doing like mindless walking around and all that sort of stuff or exploring um i did the new is it even tide island or ever tide island um i thought it was even tide even tide <laughs> island is an island from breath of the wild that's famous for reasons if you know uh so i went to that and it's even uh they've changed it up in a cool way so um they've done a very cool thing with that 
So I was messing around with that a bunch and then left because it was starting to annoy me. Um, and then, uh, yeah, it's it's mostly I've I've done two of the four main quests. I'm at the third uh, city. Same. I walked in, grabbed Same. the <laughs> grabbed the um, shrine for teleport, and then Karen came home, and I was like, I don't want to do story stuff in front of her or tears or anything like that. So um, I. Uh, Does she get mad at you when you cry? Yeah, she she shit. <laughs> no, that's horrible. Um, I will You're say supposed though, supposed to be a man those, in this relationship. So, so those dragon tears, um, you got to do them in a specific order. Uh, no, you don't. I mean, you should do them in a specific order because I did like. It makes sense so far. I did like, I did like eleven, and I had one, <laughs> and I was like, "What? Excuse me." <laughs> um, so, but I also realized. Um, Impa gives you the first quest to do them, and then she shows up in one of the cities later. And after you do each geoglyph, you just talk to her, and she's like, "Oh, did you see the see the geoglyph here?" And she just tells you the order of them. So I've just been oh. doing that because uh, it's way faster. And then I have all the geoglyphs, uh, and I have all the story, and I know what happened. And oh my god! So what happened is, um, I think I think I have half of them, and I can I can surmise. I'm gonna take back the microphone now. Can I do that? No, I've got I'm full sass tonight. Um, okay. I. We'll talk about this more in the spoiler cast. This isn't a spoiler. It's just I want to talk about this in depth. The vehicles in this game and messing around with stuff is complete is basically like completely fucking pointless until two things happen. One, you get something that helps you out. And the other one is you finally unlock the control stick and unlock as in like you find the gotcha machine that that drops the control stick. So you have them in your inventory. And it's it's frustrating because that's like for me, at least I was like 25 hours in. So yeah. so the first 25 hours, I'm like, fuck vehicles. I'm not using any of this shit because you put it together. You can't control it and it disappears. Um, but with the control stick, you can at least control it. So I have been having some fun finally building some vehicles that I can actually like steer, you know, and go back and forward and up and down. And so I have been having some fun with that. Um, I do want to turn a little bit to a bit of an old hat. And it's something that didn't bother me that much in Breath of the Wild, but is really starting to fucking piss me off in this game. And that is weapon degradation. Um, let me just tell you a little story, which is I started a quest line and they were like, hey, do you want this like legendary weapon? And I'm like, sure. They're like, you need this, including three diamonds. And I was like, OK, I got that. And I got the item. I got the weapon. And it had. Uh, no. And, and it had, it had, <laughs> it has good power. And I was like, I know this has weapon degradation on it. So I'm just going to keep this until I come to a big boss fight. Right. Or there's like a big enemy. And there was a point where there was a big enemy and I, I fought the big enemy with it. And then I turned around and I went to, there was a, a water choo choo. Is that, is that what they're called? A choo choo. I've never said that out loud. Yeah. Is it choo choo? Oh, <laughs> there's a water choo choo that popped up from the ground. And again, I've done like two hits with this weapon and I go to throw a fire at the water choo choo and I accidentally throw my legendary weapon and it immediately fucking breaks when it hits the water choo choo. Well, like yeah. a legendary fucking weapon that I've used two swings of and I happen to accidentally throw it at a normal enemy and it breaks. And I'm like, what a fucking waste. Like the weapon degradation in this game, I am fine with for lower tier weapons, but it does not scale well enough for higher weapons and for legendary weapons. It should degrade into like a broken status that you have to do some side quest to get it back. It should not just fucking disappear like a normal weapon. And it's pissing me off. Honestly, am I am I off my rocker here? Will? uh, no, I like I, I still get that. I, I I'm still like. The weapon degradation is the trade-off that you try new things. And I understand yes. that. But I um I it's just like I I did I liberated a village a monster force thing whatever today and at the end of it I was just using sticks attached sticks fused with wooden boxes that were near me. Um, yep. and it was just like, come on, just let me kill things with the good weapons I've had for a while. Um, so yeah, that is pissing me off. Like it, that gets solved when you like s stumble upon like a high enemy area and you get a bunch of really good weapons. 
once you have enough like yeah. Korok seeds and stuff like that. But yeah, or, I, I'm or right really good you, once... drops that you can fuse. Like some of the drops are like yeah. plus twenty fuse power, so you can put that on a fucking stick and you've got a nice weapon. Yeah. Um, but it's still just frustrating that you can. It's it's like a scale of progression throughout the game in terms of like you start to put all this effort in, you build up basically your average weapon level because you're able to take on more and more bosses and get better drops, better weapons. But those end weapons feel like they are, I don't know, 10, 15 percent more durable. You know, like you have a you have a little sword, a rusty sword that's like a power level six and it lasts, you know, let's say 20, 20 hits. Right. Yeah. If you have a power level 30 sword, which is five times more powerful, it lasts 20 five hits and it's like fuck you that fucking degradation scaling is broken it should be it should be i don't know i don't want to say exponential but at least multiplicative not necessarily times five but maybe times two maybe times three like like yeah. i have a more powerful weapon you know m let it sit in my inventory a little bit longer because i've earned it as opposed to just constantly punishing me it, it's it's frustrating and i didn't have that problem with breath of the wild but in this one it, it feels frustrating and I think it's only a big, I mean, it is annoying and it is an issue, but I, I think it's only a big issue because it's the one problematic thing in this game, pretty much in Breath of the Wild and this game. Like, it's the one thing people can really take issue with if they don't like it. And there's not that many of those things in both of these games. So it's like, yeah, that's fair. That's why you hear it so much, because everyone complains about it, because Honestly, it's the one thing you can complain about. Yeah, people who like weapon degrada degradation are still pissed off when they break a weapon. Like people yeah. aren't excited that they lost a weapon. So it's it's yeah. why like people defend it so passionately and why people are angry at it because both people are like, yeah, obviously we don't want to break our weapons, but I'm pissed about it or I'm I understand why they do this. Uh, I, so I just like, to twist it a little bit. I think my main problem is that Jimmy Stewart there. You can't repair these fucking weapons. I'm not Octa Rock is just yeah. like it's a cool gimmick, but that's not if they I keep fucking going to the guy in Lookout Landing who's like, I repair weapons. They're all so rusty. And I know it's not going to happen, but I keep fucking talking to him because I want him to be like, oh, pay me 20 rupees. I'll repair any weapon you have. And I'm like, great. That means the next time I have a, re a weapon that starts flashing red because it's about to break, stop using it. Go to this guy, pay him money and he repairs it because I love that weapon. That's all they have to fucking do is offer some 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 counter degradation options to you. And there's basically fucking none other than like the octa rock which is just like a cool side gimmick that's all it's not a, it's not a viable yeah, thing i i i found an octa rock who's right next to a shrine so i can just loop bing bang boom but again it's one per blood moon right it's one per blood moon there's two in the area uh, and they're both relatively close to the shrine so okay that's where I'll do i mean it. i think that's cool but i think they need to bake I, that into yeah, a mechanic yeah, yeah. more yeah. It's not it's not an excuse. It's a patch, but it's not an excuse for it. But that is just yeah. what I do. Um, Anyways. But yeah, that's Tears of the Kingdom. The the sort of big, big boy talk about it will be in a couple weeks when we have time. We're all finished with it, uh, but I am still enjoying it, uh, playing it way too much. I think I have 50 hours, 45 to 50 hours now. Wow. Wow. Oh, it's just too much. Uh, speaking of hours, though, Jake. It's your time mm -hmm. to talk. Tell me okay. all about the miles per hours that you're experiencing <laughs> in in Sonic. No, in Lego 2K Drive. Yes. So I have I've rolled credits on it now. <gasps> um, and I think it's a lot of fun. It's definitely got um some issues that weren't. Uh, a super apparent when I made the impressions video. Um, but um, yeah, I'm liking it a lot. I don't necessarily want to like ramble about it. I'll field questions about it. How does my concern is how does the driving feel? It is. Um, I think loose maybe is a good word. Like I made a lot of comparisons to hydro thunder in the impressions okay. video. Um, not even just like obviously the water parts, the boating stuff feels a lot like Hydro Thunder, but even the driving, there's a drift, but there's also like a hairpin turn um, that is helpful for when because drifting fills up your boost, but the hairpin turn doesn't. Mm -hmm. It's just for like slightly more accurate turning if you want. Um, but um, 
yeah, it's it's like looser than Mario Kart, but tighter than I don't know. I'm not sure, <laughs> but um, it's not a <laughs> it's not a simulation game. Let's let's say that. Um, okay, that's fair. Because that was my concern. Was I've talked about this before, but Forza Horizon, fantastic series. Unfortunately, the driving doesn't feel that great. The, the other question is, how does the race feel in terms of? you're racing against AI. Are they too fast? Are they too slow? Is there a lot of like apparent rubber banding or does it feel like a natural race? Like you're actually winning or is there too much of a bit of programmers hand in there? Um, it's interesting. It kind of, to me, it kind of varied race to race where some races I could <laughs> definitely feel like AI rubber banding where I might've gotten like a really bad start and the leader got really far ahead. And then suddenly I was like, wait, I've caught up to this guy really fast or vice versa where I'm super far ahead. And then right towards the end of the race, I'm like, the people are right on my tail. Um, but, um, I have to keep kind of taking a step back and being like, it's a game for 10 year olds. <laughs> it's not <laughs> necessarily for me. Um, but I um well, I don't think that's true. Well, I, I haven't played the game, but I feel like the Lego games are kind of like Mario games. They're they're cross generational. They're marketing sure, to they the Lego fans. Have mass mass market appeal. Um, but um, like the the narrative stuff definitely feels very much like okay, this is you know it's a game for kids. Um, but um, I think what's a little bit more interesting to me. I want to maybe take a brief aside to talk about um, because I have played this on the Switch and on the Xbox um, because at some point it was while I was editing the impressions video I had all this Switch footage because that's where I started and I put in one clip from the GameSpot preview. I was like game looks a lot different and obviously that's like me, my stupid mind obviously the Switch is going to have graphical limitations when put up against like an xbox or a ps5 Mm -hmm. Um, but it wasn't until then playing it on the xbox that i was like oh they made a lot of technical concessions to get this thing on the switch um to 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 the degree of like all the race footage in the impressions video is um six six racers it's eight on the xbox you're racing with an extra two people. Wow. Um, wow. That's that's straight bonk donk. Because you were sharing some images in the Discord, and it was like, wow, that does not look good on the Switch. Like, there's a noticeable difference in textures, graphics, mm-hmm. shadows, etc. Yeah, it's mostly, it's a lot in the, the texture detail. Um, there's fewer particle effects. Like, on the Xbox, when you smash into something, a lot more just kind of bricks and loose gunk go clattering about. Um, the water is um, basically just a flat texture on the Switch where it actually has like yep. depth on the Xbox. You can like see things below the water line. Um, but yeah, it was the fact that on the Switch, all the races are with six oppo- or six racers, five opponents. And then on the Xbox, it's eight. Um, that I was kind of wild. Like 12 for a second, and that mm-hmm. would have knocked my socks off. <laughs> I was going to just go for broke 24. Um, but to circle back to the driving a little bit, the, with the with the drifting and the there's like a hop and a boost, you can do Ooh. kind of some pretty creative kind of arcadey driving. And I think the arcade facade of it all kind of masks a bit of maybe its sloppiness if you're co- <laughs> if you're going at it wanting something like a Mario Kart or even something closer to like like simulation driving. The presentation of it. Um, kind of excuses a bit of its f- flimsiness, um, mm. and it when you're actually like traversing the open world and stuff, you can do like you can cover two thousand yards of terrain phenomenally uh-huh. quick if you're if you're having fun with it. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to play it. I'm just Same. it's not it's not a good time. Mm. Um, I'm not putting things. it on the game of the year list. It's not that by any stretch. But wow. really, um, you don't think you don't think it would be top ten? I don't think so. I, I'm I'm not. I, I'm. Well, I'm sorry. Let me interrupt you real quick. Sure. We haven't discussed yet, which is that the big thing is this game has customization, 
And Jake has been posting oh, some of those creations, including sure. the Kill Dozer. And that's the big thing that <laughs> makes me want to play this game is the crazy customization of the vehicle. Sure. Talk about that for a bit. This, I said right at the top that there were issues with the game that didn't present themselves when I made the impressions video. The garage has a super powerful editor, but it does have significant limitations if you're going into it wanting to totally build your car from the ground up. They give you a variety of predetermined chassis. Um, and from those, you can't adjust like how many how many wheels it has or the length between the axles. Um, oh. Which at some point, like I joked about wanting to make, um, I don't know if I put it on the Discord, but I put it on Twitter. I joked about wanting to make uh, Nemo's big little hot rod thing from League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, oh, which yes. has like, that super long yes. front end, and it's got four tires in the front and two in the back. And I was like, okay, oh, that's right. let yeah. me see. I, I, I thought maybe I would unlock, like LEGO Racers 1, the whole garage wasn't unlocked right at the start. You would unlock chassis and brick sets as you defeated enemies. So I'm like, well, maybe that's what they're going to do. And you do unlock brick sets as the game progresses, but you don't unlock any new chassis. So the ones that are there at mm. the beginning are the ones you can use. And I tried, because I did then unlock, when you unlock enemy vehicles, you can modify them to a degree. I hoped there was one that had two tires on the back and one on the front. And I'm like, oh, if I just do a 180 with that, I can make this stupid car from League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Um, but once I stripped all the bricks off, it wasn't just down to the chassis. It still had like preset elements mm. that were built into like that vehicle model. Um, and I could not change the orientation. I couldn't do a 180 and tell it to drive that way instead of that way. Um, so there are limitations if you're a weird Lego nerd like I am, who really wants to like strip it down to its barest components and build it from the ground up. Um, yeah, that's frustrating. What you can do with the stuff that's there is pretty impressive in that box. Uh, yeah. I'll say that like be being able to build the kill dozer. <laughs> now, let me ask you the question. The devs had one answer. I want to hear yours. Mm -hmm. Depending. Does your build decisions in the garage actually impact how the vehicle drives and performs and to what extent? My understanding of it, which I actually didn't know, there's a fair amount of the game that's obfuscated outside of tutorials where random like world dialogue will mm -hmm. prompt you to something and you'll be like, oh, I didn't know it could do that. So the only substantial change that I know <laughs> of the is you can build. Oh, there's also a 350, a 350 brick limit uh, to whatever oh. you're building. But yeah, what? how okay. that's it scales that by like the weight, quote unquote, mm -hmm. the weight of the vehicle. So 350 is a class six, which is the heaviest. And that <laughs> provides you more melee damage. Special license for that. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> is it really called sorry. class six? I believe the taxonomy is class. I could be wrong, but. Um, but is it anyway. is it like. It's for some reason, I find the idea of you're playing a Lego game and they're like, your vehicle has reached weight class six. It just to be so funny because it's like, a, do you have your CDL? Have you been to the DMV yeah. recently? It's it oh, I guess way it too say, accurate. It doesn't say uh, it just has like a, a weight with a number on it. So the kill dozer oh. is weight level six and it says massive. <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, Hell yeah! So if that provides. And you, how many bureaucrats have you killed with that? Not enough. <laughs> not um, enough. But um, it provides you with greater melee power against other drivers in the races. Um, Man, gosh. I just came up with a, a stream series, which is we just play a series of games that allow us to build and use the kill dozer. <laughs> kill dozer. <laughs> yeah. Rigs. Uh, oh, brick rigs. Minecraft. I have MNG. not submitted it for <laughs> online approval because I'm certain it will get denied. <laughs> they probably won't. Just call it the Dilkozer and they probably won't get it. <laughs> Dilkozer. Or call Dilkozer it, call it sounds it the, like a co co like a koozie <laughs> for your dick. Hmm. Call it like the red the red tape mobile or something hmm. like that. 
Oh, the other thing in the in the microtransaction oh, okay. storefront, which is upsetting, um, the season pass seems to have four expansions. Um, <clears throat> it's segmented into four <clears throat> chunks. Um, <clears throat> So I have no idea what's going to come of that, if they'll add more chassis and more bricks. Um, oh, because that's the other thing about the garage, is they've obviously, there's a wide variety of bricks they're capable of using because they're on the enemy vehicles. But the only way you can use certain bricks is if you modify that specific vehicle. They're not available that's in the wider oh. brick set. Ooh, I cannot wait to play this fucking game when it comes to Game Pass. I will not be purchasing it based on all these things I'm hearing. Yeah. Mm. This is why I'm saying it's not Game of the Year. Like I'm having a lot of fun with it as like a Lego racing nerd, but mm -hmm. um, it's not ruining, Game of the Year. You're ruining my life right now. I'm sorry. Man, piece of shit. Yo, tell me yeah, about Bolt Gun. Think about the kids. Oh, um, Bolt Gun is very fun. Will, oh, do you want to go first? Or? Oh, I do. I do, okay. I do, I do. But first, I want to... Uh, no, I'll talk about Bolt Gun first. 40k Bolt Gun is a boomer shooter in the most explicit of terms. It is a Doom, Doom 2. It is a Dusk. It is a that game. It is so good. Uh, it is set in the 40k universe. You are a Ultramarine? Space Marine? Space Marine. I think you're an Ultramarine. Aren't Ultramarines more better than Space Marines? As somebody who has now read three mm. Warhammer 40k books, oh, God. I don't know because that was all about the Imperial <laughs> Guard and it didn't okay. have a single Space Marine. Because it. it's just you by yourself. So you're not, a, you're obviously not a regular troop, but you are, I think, I can't remember that. Anyways, so you are a Space Marine. Marine. Voiced uh, by Rahul Kohli, I believe. Uh, what'd you say? If voiced by Rahul Kohli. Oh, really? I think so. Are you not using the taunts when uh, you no, get I'm into No, I'm using the taunts. I'm just racist. No, I just, I'm just not listening to it, really. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> nothing to wasn't do with even it. A, wasn't even a good racism joke. It just didn't know, make sense. It doesn't make sense. That's the point. It doesn't uh, make sense. I'm in sure defeat. It doesn't make but sense. If, <laughs> if I find out what my character looks like... <laughs> uh, then I'll be then upset. I'll be no, but you're working for this uh, Inquisitor lady... With like a cool face mask and you're going What's down to this planet. Sorry, I've just I've become obsessed with 40k lore because uh, a, a side tangent. They do. A, it turns out they do a great job of embracing their extended universe. Like yeah. I'm reading books about Gaunt's Ghost and I googled Warhammer 40k Gaunt's Ghost and there's a sponsored Warhammer 40k miniature set I can buy for the main characters yeah. in my story. So now every time somebody says Warhammer 40k, I'm like, give me the names and I may know them. So I don't Lilith? remember. I don't remember the names, but basically you're going to this planet. It's being overrun by chaos and you've got to kill everything and find okay. it. You've got to get to the data banks as chapter one. I just started chapter two. Oh. Um, it feels good. It feels very good. Um, you're running around. So this is what I want to say. And I, I hopefully I wasn't throwing shade at you, Jake. Um, mm. uh, when I said you're playing on a console only because like boomer shooters are the only FPSs unless I need like precision that I have to play on a pc because sure. it's just like i'm whipping i'm always sprinting i'm always jumping around like that sort of stuff so that's why i was amazed you're playing it on a console but i don't know if you're playing in that boomer shooter style so it, it might not wholly be the same exact thing i will say i i never played doom 1993 like in that era when i would have played it on a pc the first time i played it was on a console mm -hmm. um so i've never had that same kind of attachment to playing that specific niche of of fps shooter on oh. mouse and keyboard um yeah but i'm so, also like the space marine is certainly not as like mobile as doom guy the sound design of him stomping around so good. it's like so weighty and so beefy that i'm almost kind of like role playing it as like a just walking and sprinting when he wants to and just smashing through things like the Kool-Aid man. Uh -huh. Yeah, the um you can fall from any height and you just hit the ground and it's just like yeah. Pfft. Um there's oh, so a... what you're missing out on then is the great controller rumble when oh, I guess when I you know. do stuff like that. So there's and a the great revving um, of the chain sword. You have a chain sword and if you jump into the air, actually I don't think you have to jump in the air. If you hold it the mouse button uh, right mouse button 
it'll highlight an enemy and everything will slow mo and then you launch towards the enemy and you like chainsaw Ooh, into their faces. It's so good. And there's a power up that lets you do that over and over again. But the normal cooldown for it is pretty quick anyway, so you could mm -hmm. get through a bunch of enemies, just not that quite that fast. Um the guns feel really good. There's the bolt caster, bolt caster, bolt gun is the first weapon you get, then you get a shotgun, and then you get the plasma weapon that I don't use that often because it's it's, it's got splash I damage. For, so it's yeah, good for I save it for bosses and groups. Uh and then the heavy bolt gun Heavy bolter is just it. You have to when you shoot it, your character picks it up to shoot. Um, yes, and that I use yeah. exclusively on bosses. Uh, I started to get a little bit of enemies. distortion and buzz out of my speakers the first time oh, I used it. God, <laughs> I didn't turn this down. Oh, <laughs> phenomenal. The music's great. Uh, it's not. It hasn't hit me that hard. It's good music. It's good like 40k music. I think it's mixed uh, pretty low. I might go yeah. into the settings and turn it up independent. Um, of everything but else. yeah, the controls feel fantastic. You have a nice jump. You feel uh, very weighty um, running around. I, that level, uh, Jake, that is essentially Interstellar meets Harry Potter staircase, where you're like going through the portals. Oh, sure, uh, like the MC Escher kind of. Yeah, thing. I was so confused because I was like, "Where am I going? Where am I going?" Before I realized, like, you just follow the portals and it <laughs> brings you through the level, basically. Well, I. Um, I actually I don't know maybe if I had kept following because I thought maybe it didn't want me to do that and so there was a point where I was on one and then I jumped onto like one of the ones that wasn't oriented right and then I jumped onto a crate that was like attached to the wall of another yeah. one and then I got through into the so right portal but that is the right answer because I, oh, okay. after I, I realized that uh, I also realized you're following the like lit candles Mm. And they lead that way. So it's um, the the uh, Alfred Hitchcock. The most important thing in the scene is the thing that the light is shining on. Yeah, um, I I was two seconds from messaging you to ask you how you got through it <laughs> because I was like, where am I going? And then I, but anyways, uh, the one problem I do kind of have with it is um, the enemy variety is a little low in the first chapter. Like I feel like it's sh after like the first two or three levels, it's always the same enemies. Um, the bosses are kind of neat, like, but I'm too afraid to get too close to them because mm. they'll take out mm -hmm. too much damage. There are so many items on the map everywhere, uh, so you really don't worry about losing too much health or running out of ammo or grenades. That's good. Just, That's stuff good. is everywhere all the time. Uh, the arenas are pretty good uh, that you're fighting in. They're, they like mark, they keep you in the area because it's like suddenly a purge is happening. You have to kill all the enemies before you can move on uh, in like sort of classic boomer shooter style uh and then uh yeah just overall i think i didn't expect it to play this well it just feels good you just want to keep going through it uh the missions have run me between 15 to 25 minutes ish same uh mm -hmm. they're fairly long there's a bunch of secrets and i haven't found all the secrets in every level yet uh i'm not really hunting for them but uh i have found a few that have been like behind hidden walls uh which uh, is pretty great. And I, I kind of already am feeling like I want to, I'm playing on medium and I'm like, I could, I could do this on a harder difficulty. Like, what if I, what if I just started yeah. chapter two on like a harder difficulty? Yeah. Get um, hard, bro. It's worth the 20 bucks. I think a thousand percent. Uh, oh I yeah. Hard, I was bro. expecting it to be more. Yeah. And then I went to the store and I'm like, Oh, it's only like 22 bucks. So, yeah. It's good great. Stuff. I, I think I honestly, I, I don't know if, I'll say it now. I don't know if it'll be true, but I think I might put it on the game of the year list. I I'm loving it I was enough that I'm considering think, that as well. I think it would be in the mm -hmm. top ten. So, well, if you're considering More it so as well, let's, let's put it on there. Yeah, uh, it's on there. Perfect. Warhammer 40k bolt gun. Uh, highly recommended. Everyone out there, very good. Hey, Jake, is there anything else you want to say on it? Oh, I mean, I knew that this was going to potentially be, you know, the the first hit of me consuming more. <laughs> 40k oh, no. material <laughs> because even though there's not like a ton of like voice acting the narrative stuff that is in there i'm a sucker this is a thing that i mentioned in a in a in a dead space video that i've been developing for a while but i'm like super into that sci-fi niche of weird space theology <laughs> Yeah, um, we're like 100%. like like Dune and uh, like the sword logic in Destiny, like the Carl Urban's whole thing in Chronicles of Riddick, 
and I'm playing through this 40k thing and it's all couched in all this very like religious language and religious iconography. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> yeah, I, the, the other thing I like about 40k is it's been that dark future for so long that all the ancient stuff is still future stuff. So it's like you're going through those crypts and everything and it's like ancient statues of space marines because they've mm-hmm. just been space marines for 40,000 years like for mm-hmm. 20,000 years however long it's been. Um and uh I will say if you want to satisfy that without uh completely ruining your life, the uh 40k wiki is genuinely a good read. Like I just went to the emperor's page and just started reading about him and then I just went off in directions reading about stuff. Um for 40k so um i'll agree with you there um so that's 40k bolt gun the only other game i've been playing folks islanders Mm -hmm. one uh jake terrio is one of his favorite games of all time Mm -hmm. 786 hours in it um he has folks um i don't like islanders okay um it's not for me i understand what it's doing but it is the most frustrating game I've ever played, and I hate. Ev- I just do not. How are like you playing it? it? Elaborate. Playing Explain. It? You piece oh, of shit. So How are you playing you it? A fucking island, and they're like, "Hey, listen, you, here's your thing." Oh, it's over a thousand hours now. <laughs> oh god! And it's like, hey, put your little fucking fishing hut here. You get, or put your log camp here. You get plus fifth four twenty five because there's a bunch of trees. And then it's like, put your other log camp over here because it can't be within the same range of the first log camp. And then put your saw cutter here. And then you unlock the next set of things. And it's like, okay, now I've got to put these windmills somewhere. So I put the windmill somewhere. And then it's like, okay, you got to put the little farms near the windmill, but they can't be too close to the other things. And also nothing snaps at all. So everything looks like dog shit when you try to put it down and it's not looking good and I hate it. Mm, And then it's like, here's your village center and then you get mansions and houses and then you're like you're almost done placing them and then it's like oh it's time to go to your next island and it's just like and then <laughs> i go to my next island and i start putting things down and then i'm like sorry you didn't get enough points to get to the next island and then they just like spit you back to the main menu and it's just like i so i can partially understand <sighs> because i i was not a big fan of the point system in this game because it is the only thing in the game that's adding a bit of tension in what is otherwise a very chill game. Um, and so I can kind of understand some of your complaints. But think, other than I that, think I think I think if I may. I think this goes back to something we've talked about, which is games like this. You start to play them. And as soon as you start to enjoy them, you restart the game because you think you can do it better or more perfect. And this game is not like that. This game is not asking for perfection and it's not going to snap to a grid. It's not going to be perfectly designed. It's a chill placement game. And I don't think that's the type of placement game that works for you. Uh, I will say I am playing it up a bit because I know Jake really likes this game and it's funny that way. I saw I, I obviously I don't hate it or anything like that. I just like I tried it the first time I tried it, I played for 30 minutes and I was like, I can't do this anymore. And then the second time I tried it, I played for about an hour and that was far more enjoyable. I made it like six or seven islands and I had like way too many points. And I was like, okay, I need to stop playing this. So like jokes aside, I do think it's a pretty good game. It's just not anything I want from a video game. Sure. Uh, It's just like it's one level too, too far away from like I want to like. I don't know, like mine some resources to build up, like earning the points, I think is the the biggest struggle for me. I would rather put the saws down and it telling me I earned a bunch of logs to build. Sure. Yeah. And then I'm earning fish to feed the population. So then I earn more house. Like that's what I want. So I think that connective tissue is why I am faltering on it so much. Yeah. Because it's not a management game at all. Totally. Yeah. I also think yeah. it doesn't control well on the computer. I I had a hard time. It just didn't. Nothing felt good about the controls. It felt like it wanted me to be playing with a controller or like a. a, a it almost felt like I was playing a iPad game on a computer, uh, and that's no fault. I mean, that is fault of it. But it just that's the way it kind of felt to me. It didn't feel like I was playing something that was meant to be played on a computer, and that kind of 
the just the disconnect between my direct control of it. I kept messing up like placements on things or I'd hit the wrong button to go back. Uh, and again, that, that comes with the amount of time you play a game. But that was also grading at me a little bit. So Islanders, I don't love it. It's not the worst thing in the world, but no one sh in their right mind should ever play it. Um, no, it's, it's people who want to play it, play it. If you like Jake, play it. If you like me, then still play it because it was pretty good, actually, honestly. If you like Ian, uh, <laughs> whew, I got problems for you. Um, why? Yeah, why? <laughs> Um, and then finally, uh, Jake, you want to talk about, oh God, uh, I already started the sentence. We should, we should <laughs> skip to the news. <laughs> no, it's some, very short. Us some Destiny 2? They added fishing. What? Yeah. Oops, sorry. Look, let me tell you, let me cut this off. Remember when they added sparrow racing and it was like fishing. dog awesome. shit? Awesome. I don't no. trust them whenever the they add anything. Game mode. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What are Sparrow you talking about? Sparrow racing is fantastic. If they brought people back Sparrow are, racing, every I would year people Destiny are clamoring two. for it to come back. Sparrow is still terrible. Destiny 2 so fast if that came back. <laughs> I, was I just don't trust them adding anything to this game because it feels like it's two steps forward, two steps back with everything they do. Well, now they've got, I don't know what chunk of their studio is working on Marathon, but. Um, Fuck that. <laughs> if okay. but fishing, there's fishing. My, th my promise is, Jake, and you can hold mm -hmm. me to this with your massive gun collection. Uh, we all know you have. Um, no, I was going to say, if a Destiny expansion comes out and it is highly regarded outside mm -hmm. of the Destiny <sighs> community, that was I the Witch Queen. It. I have a poster of it. Yeah, I don't think so. Or Destiny 3 comes out. Uh, they are not going to do that. I They've know. said many, many times. Yeah, but they also said that Destiny Two. They was probably. Fixed. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> At this point, they probably should because they, to your point, they have not fixed Destiny Two. They just keep making it worse and better in weird ways. And mm -hmm. maybe they do need a fucking clean slate. You know, it's a. It's like there's the game is so big that there's so many little gremlins in the code. <laughs> And in the engine, that when they add new stuff, there's really no telling what might break <laughs> or how it will break. Yeah. There's no yeah. way to plan for it. It's I just hope, a fun surprise. I'm just looking forward to the great shooting in Marathon that will hopefully be there. And then I think Bungie is still the best in the biz in terms of oh, gunplay. Yeah. yeah. And art direction. Oh, that was not great. sarcasm. Uh, their uh, Marathon game gunplay is gonna be fantastic. Yeah, no, I know you weren't being sarcastic. Oh, I'm Jake, saying I said I wasn't being stream. sarcastic for the viewers. <laughs> um, anyways, Islander sucks. Uh, <laughs> kidding. Uh, it's time to get to the news here with uh, not but little minutes left in the show. Big news this week. Ian, kick it off. Tell me all about the Faux 3 PlayStation Showcase. That's right. Uh, E3... PlayStation had their E3 showcase. I know E3's dead this year, but fuck you. It's the end of May. This was their E3 showcase. Um, they showed off a lot of shit. Let's go through some of these highlights real quick. Project Q has been confirmed. This is an 8-inch handheld device that only connects with your PS5 via remote play. And as that's all they've announced. That's all it does. It does not run the games locally. It does not run them on the cloud. It just remote connects to your home PS5. This is fucking stupid, right? <laughs> yeah. Is it so? It's it's different than like the Wii U gamepad, yes, because that was a a peripheral. It was not play. You couldn't play the actual the whole game on the. That's correct. It's it's literally just a Wii tablet. U it is a Wii it's U a gamepad, tab isn't it? No, it's not, because 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 the Wii U gamepad can't it run had, on like, its own. It had like the map for Lego City Undercover on it. It's, it's but depending I'm saying on if, it. If, no, this if is you not. Turn this off is, the no, 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 let me let me stop it. Let me stop this. It's a tablet. It's a tablet with a controller attached to it, and it runs the remote play app that connects to your PS5. That's yeah. fucking it. I can do that right now with my phone. That's all it does. Yeah, it's yeah, just I, a remote play tablet to your phone. My with phone, an attached the controller. Wii U gamepad you could remote play off of your Wii U and the TV. Was My it question on the game, but yes, you could. Yeah. So That's I'm maybe I'm maybe a bit of an idiot. I'm picturing 
is this a device that you take out of your home? Like to be like you're you're streaming it, you know, on the train or whatever, or are you just in another room of your house? I believe I believe you can, and the reason why I'm saying that is I believe right now you can remote play your PlayStation console outside the house. Sure, but, but that would certainly then be dependent on where you are and how good your connection is, and even just your home connection. Yeah, even just your home fucking internet connection. It seems it's, weird. <laughs> It's very fucking stupid. Yeah, like if it, it was this plus cloud, I'd be okay. But it's not. It's just your home PS5. Yeah. That seems like a half baked idea that got leaked, and then they're like, "Wow, well, let's <laughs> announce it." Yeah. It's um, it's very very stupid. Um, moving on from that, we saw some uh, Marvel's Spider Hyphen Man Two. Spiders Man, uh, which is coming out later this year. What did you guys think about this? I haven't played the first one. Or the Miles Morales one. Uh, it looks like a Spider-Man game. Yeah, I, I feel like I had a, this this moment of clarity. In our community discord, where I basically said, this does not look like a bad game. It looks like a good game, but it is the third game in this series. And it looks exactly the same as the previous two. Sure. And on top of that, the thing that I'm just realizing is this fucking cinematic heavy, quick time heavy, like look at all these scripted Theory, events, etc. How the f- this does this is not going to work. That, that's that's a bit excessive. This is going to be a fine video game, but you put this up against something like Breath of the Wild, which is all that emergent gameplay, like actual exploration with a reason to explore because you're finding things. This fucking linear scripted event, quick time event stuff is going to pale in comparison. So this feels like a triple A take at old game design. And it's the third time they're doing it. And it's just hard to get excited for it. You know, I, I will say. In to, to to compare and contrast it with something like Breath of the Wild, I think people are coming to a Spider-Man game, especially the Insomniac Spider-Man games, probably for because they're like, I want to play a Spider-Man story. Where yeah. Zelda, like you said, it's emergent gameplay exploration. It's less about the narrative and more about the experience. Um, because even like yeah. Horizon Zero Dawn and Horizon Forbidden West are functionally the same game they iterated a little bit on the combat system and they added new machines or whatever but i didn't play forbidden west because i was interested in seeing how they iterated on the game design i wanted to know the continuation of the story which i guess at some point i could just buy a book or read a wiki and i think that's the reason i dropped god of war ragnarok is because i didn't care about the story of god of war ragnarok it was still the same gameplay and i'm just not in the mood to I love the gameplay of God of War, uh, God of War, modern God of War. I'm just not in the mood to play it. So if I'm not interested in the story, I'm not in the mood for that. And and like Jake was saying, I know a bunch of people who love Spider-Man. So like, that's the reason they want to play the new Spider-Man game. Like they yeah. want Spider-Man stories and I don't care. It It is a great feeling in Spider-Man. I played that first game and it, it feels great. It's if you want to be Spider-Man, this feels like you are Spider-Man. Um, it's just weird see sony continue to embrace these types of games and stories when the rest of the industry is moving in other directions um speaking of other directions Spider-Man, that's their cash cow that's true spider-man's yeah. keeping uh, them afloat speaking of other directions bungie has announced a marathon game that will be a pvpve extraction shooter gentlemen how do we feel about this i would prefer it to be single player but yes. um, I'm sure it will play well. It'll feel great. Yeah. But my experience, having dabbled a little bit in PvP, VE, extraction shooters, I'm not a fan of the tension. I'm not a, ta- a fan of that genre. It tends to encourage a toxic fan base and honestly toxic game design, which is all about, you know, grind, uh, excessive monetization, you know, uh, uh, crazy tweaks to try and balance the community against individuals who are doing better than they should be, et cetera. I, I, I want to be excited for this. I hope it's free to play so I can at least try it out. But PvPVE extraction shooter, I'm not excited for it. Um, is PvPVE going to be popular in five years when the game comes out? That's the other question. Oh, that's a good point. They did yeah, not put they a date on they this. They didn't attach a release window on it. 
did they? It's just an, a it's a, a quote official announce trailer. Like oh. how much of that game? Like I'm I'm never confident ever in things shown or said in announcement trailers, especially if there's no date, because how far along are they? What's going to change be- before it comes out? There's uh, been whispers for maybe like a year or a year and a half that Bungie was working on some sort of marathon title. Um, so who knows how much of that was speculative and then at what point it would have become real. Um, mm. But um, yeah, I don't know. It was certainly to you know anybody listening, it was just a big CGI you know, art direction presentation rather than any, anything gameplay wise. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm sure they're not at that point yet. One of my favorite artists um, did the some of the design in it. The Paul, I don't know, not know how to pronounce his last name. It's like Chidison. I do know who you're talking about. Um, he posts he posts stuff a long time ago. I think he did Homeworld stuff too. Um, mm-hmm. And now he does like a lot of stuff for video games. He just makes really cool, interesting spaceships, but mm-hmm. does them from like a v- really zoomed out angle usually, and they just look yeah freaking cool. Um, so I don't I know, I, I'm on the. The more I think about this, I'm on the fence because I feel like talking about Destiny, ups and downs, gunplay is fantastic, right? And some of the enemy encounters and boss encounter designs and strike designs are really cool. Where where they don't get it is any of the storytelling in terms of how they tell that story throughout the missions and the DLC. They've kind of bundled that. I mean, not bundled that. They've uh, it's peaks and valleys. Yeah, they don't know how to tell it properly. Um, the, they keep introducing so many fucking like, here's light, here's gear, here's levels, here's mods, here's, and it just has become horribly confusing. And, uh, the play new player onboarding has just become worse and worse and worse. So when I think about those ups and downs and I go, okay, how are they going to map those to a PVP VE extraction shooter? I think it's going to be better. I feel better about that than destiny because you're not really telling a story. And there's honestly not a whole lot of that crazy insanity of mechanics, et cetera, that you're going to be able to provide. A PvP VE extraction shooter is really just about go in the world, shoot, loot, what are the encounters, and then you come back out of it. And maybe you have a little bit of like weapon upgrades and, and weapon mods, et cetera. But it's more focused on the get in, get out combat gameplay as opposed to something like Destiny, which felt like a lot of fluff on top of that and in between the stuff. So that makes me feel a little bit better now that I yeah, think about it. I mean, it. I, I would expect this new marathon thing to be like you pick a character with a set loadout. And I'm, I'm imagining it's not going to have a ton of customization apart from, you know, cosmetics, because that's a thing that everybody does now. Um, oh, no, I, th- I think it's the opposite. I think it's like Tarkov. So the whole thing about Tarkov is you go into the ring, you grab gear, you leave with that gear. And that is now a gun in your inventory that you can modify and add stuff to. And oh. next time you go into the ring, you're picking one of your guns. Oh, so like, yeah. so like that's that's the whole thing about the extraction shooter is that it's not a set loadout. It's you are building a loadout every time you go in based on what you got in previous runs. Yeah, interesting. But typically, if you, they're gone forever. Yeah, typically, if you die in that run, then whatever you're carrying stays in the ring for somebody else, and, and it doesn't come out with you. Hmm. Which is part of that. I don't like that tension. I don't like that all or nothing type thing. Um, so that's where that's where I think they could excel weapon design, unique encounters in the world, etc. And and not lean so much into the story because PvP VE, there's not much room for story, honestly. Also, it'd be cool to see them innovate on that style. Like, I'm sure there's yeah. plenty of ways to make new like insurance schemes for your specific things or like uh, like they could definitely add like the little bungee twist where you like the quest stuff in uh Warzone 2.0 was really cool. So I can see them doing yep. something really neat with that. Um go scan these four items <laughs> and yeah. walk back uh with your ghost, legally not ghost. Um and all this sort of stuff. So uh I'm interested in it. It'll be exciting. Uh what's next, Ian? Uh, Metal Gear Solid Delta Snake Eater, the okay. long rumored Metal, next. Metal Gear Solid 3 remake. Uh, it's finally coming and also announced with it is a Metal Gear Solid. I believe it's called Metal Gear Solid Legacy Collection Part 1. Master Collection. Please. Master Collection, Volume which has 1, 2, one. and 3. They're flat ports. They're not changing any goddamn thing about these games. It's just 1, 2, 3. Uh, how are we feeling about this, boys? 
I've played about really five minutes excited. of the Phantom Pain, and that is my experience with Metal Gear. So, I feel like you would love Metal Gear, Jake. Now I feel I like I it. would too, but oh, um, I just have to sit down with it. No, don't because they're gonna like the one up me on Metal Gear stuff, and then. What do you mean one up you? I'm I'm excited for, the, for the three Gear remake. Then, and then I'll be off on the oh. sidelines. No, I will I'll not. Makes, I will not be the new this. host of Chasing Metal Kojima. Uh, uh, I, I'm excited about this because I'm not a huge Metal Gear fan. I've dabbled a little bit and I've enjoyed what I've played, but I don't have a hunger to go back and play the old games. I have heard fantastic things about three and I've always wanted to play three. But the last time I looked, they said the best version of three is on the 3ds i believe um that may have been before the ps3 collection came out though but either way this game's begging for a remake a lot of people love it it's a bit old in the tooth and uh, you know just follow that that resident evil remake where they it's it's 99 the same game but then they've added a whole lot of extra stuff on top quality of life graphics improvements they've released some screenshots so this this feels like a no-brainer this should be a home run right yeah, will it, it say will be... right at the top a Hideo Kojima game? No, absolutely not. They've already removed his no. name from the last time they've released stuff. So that's what <laughs> I figured. Um, I am very excited for this. Metal Gear Solid Three is my favorite Metal Gear. I don't um, believe you because you keep saying Metal Gear Solid Five is the greatest game of all time. Metal Gear Solid is the greatest. Metal Gear Solid Five is the greatest playing game of all time, uh, and it's the best Metal Gear game. But it is not my favorite Metal Gear game. Uh, three. What about Snake that Tower Eater, Defense one? Uh, three Snake Eater is very good. Well, the problem with Phantom Pain is it's not finished, so you can't even give it a score. It's a question mark out of ten. Um, Jake, um, please don't play any Metal Gear Solid games because then you're going to turn into this fucking bumbling mess that Will is listen, right now. Listen, listen, it's Metal Gear Solid V, anyways. It stands for Venom, who's Venom Snake. We actually haven't seen Metal Gear Solid Five. It hasn't even come out yet. So for you to be saying this, listen, it's, it's a not... Phantom Pain for a reason. <laughs> yeah, because Big Boss tricked Venom Snake into taking a fall for him, so Kiefer Sutherland <laughs> could escape. Wait, so uh, how does anyway. it connect to Grand Theft Auto V? Well, Venom Nico Bellic uh, <laughs> left New York for LA. Uh, no, but I'm very excited for this. Uh, I like Metal Gear Solid 1. I like Metal Gear Solid 2. Uh, 3 is the first time I played a Metal Gear Solid game and didn't need a walkthrough. Uh, it was not archaic. Wow. It was good. And I just played it. There were, of course, I like I looked up bosses occasionally, but most of them, if not all of them, I did on my own. It's got a lot of interesting stuff to it. I'm interested to see on how they change a lot of mechanics because there's stuff. Even watching through gameplay footage this week from the original, there's a lot of stuff that's like, oh, I just need, I just this autumn, I'm replaying all all three of them. But um, I was just like, yeah, they could do this. Like I was thinking the the the. Like the healing menu, they could change up a little bit because, like, you get hurt and stuff. You like clean wounds and like fix up stuff and everything. Ugh. As far as I remember, and then there's a whole camo thing in that game, which I can see being just a radial menu now, uh, for like quick access. Like, oh, I'm going into this. Mm -hmm. Like, change my camo to that or anything. Or them just like figuring out some new way to do that. Um, I'm excited. The original voice cast is coming back. Um, I'm excited they're remastering all the stuff. I wonder if they'll use all the pachinko cutscenes uh, so they don't have to do most of the work, um, which will be interesting. Uh, but yeah, I'm very excited. Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, it's a fantastic game. Um, the latter scene alone is Oscar worthy. Um, <laughs> so outside of that, I I'm just very excited. In the collection, I'm also excited to have these games on a modern console. Um, and it, I believe it's it's pretty much exactly that PS3 collection uh, without four because the two has well, the I MSX think... games on it and um, one has the VR. I, well, well, I feel like the PS3 collection has like nine games and I think the new one has six. So it is missing a couple, I believe. I think it's missing everything with four, but the MSX games are on Could it. Could be. And then it's probably I don't think it has Peace Walker either. No, I don't think it does. Um, 
and it might be missing something else but it has one two and three and the two msx those two msx games actually play pretty well um and they play even better i imagine when you don't when you have save states uh which hopefully they might add mm. um but yeah overall very excited for this as a metal gear fan uh it's just like oh god Metal Gear's so good. Jake, you should play Metal Gear. We should just, you should just, if anyone wants to play Metal just Gear, just wait for the collection. It, I'll be there. Yeah. So I'm going to start with Revengeance. That's a good one. But, anyways, um, that's basically the, the, the PlayStation showcase. They had a bunch of other stuff shown, some stuff previously announced. Uh, I, I think overall reactions were kind of mixed. Good to see some stuff. I think people were expecting more. Just seems like a solid showing. I mean, honestly, it was it was a pretty good show because nowadays everybody just does these tiny digital shows all the time. And that was more than just a tiny little digital show. And and I appreciate yeah. that. I wanted to know if they're the like geometric transitions. There were a couple that looked like they were practical sets that they had like a drone flying around. I wanted to know. I want to see the behind yeah. the scenes. I don't think they're real. But I, but I also didn't think Jim Ryan looked real. He <laughs> looks like a deep fake too. So, um, but I, I in literally the decimal had the same, engine. Uh, same thought, uh, Jake. I wanted to know if they were real sets or not because they they looked pretty good. Um, they do. They are always good with that presentation. Um, yeah, I think that's the show, right, boys? No more news, Ian. That's right. Everything's dead. End of the games industry, folks. Thanks so much for being here. Jake, Terrio, Ian Gibson, my boys, thanks for being here. I love both of you. Shout out to Islanders. You're a great game. Um, and 40K Bolt Gun. Fuck you, LEGO 2K Drive, you dog. Uh, we'll be back, what, Saturday, 5 p.m. Eastern with some Kingdom Hearts? My That's right, Saturday, heart, 5 p.m. Eastern. Even more I, Kingdom Hearts. I forgot to talk about that game, but I'm so close to just dropping that whole fucking yeah, series because that game's terrible. It used it's to very be close. rough on Tuesday. Very good. The game's irredeemable. I was just playing Bolt Gun and watching, and I was like, oh, he could be having a much better time right now. <laughs> um, yeah, so check that out this Saturday, and then next week, uh, things are a little bit different. Uh, but enjoy your weekend, Memorial Day. Bye, everyone. Bye.